Hi everyone. In this episode, we will have a look at how we can implement an efficient file upload over GraphQL with our chocolate. Before we get started, if you like our content, please hit the subscribe and like button below the video. And with that, let's dive just in. So first, the GraphQL specification itself doesn't deal with file uploads or binary streams or anything like that. The core specification declared the transport layer out of scope. There is a GraphQL over HTTP specification that deals with uh, the transport implications, but not specifically with file upload. So there is a community spec called the GraphQL multipart request specification that looks specifically at the scenarios of file upload and um, also at batching and things like that. We could do file upload also with the core GraphQL specification, but then we would need to encode a file into a base64 string, which is not really efficient. Also from the transport in, uh, in ASP.NET Core, we would get a string, then we would encode that to a byte array and then write that somewhere. So we would have a lot more allocation than if we could just stream in the files. So the GraphQL multi-part request specification defines that a request is essentially done with the HTTP post and we will send in a multi-part document. And that allows us to specify in the first part, for instance, the GraphQL request. The second part is a mapping between the variables of our request and the files that we attach to our request. All consecutive parts of our multipart request document are represented by files. We can also see here a further example that uh, is on the GitHub repository and the specification that we can have like multiple files. We can have list of files or uh, whatever. We also could use this specification to do batching, but this is out of scope for this video. So we are not looking at that. If you like his work, give him a star. It's always nice to give back to open source projects. And with that, let's have a look at how we can apply the specification in hot chocolate and how we can test that with banana cake pop. Let's put the things together in VS Code here. And we have here our standard examples with books and authors, so nothing special. What we want to do is enable the consumer of our API to upload a profile picture to the author. So let's have a look at the query CS where our main types are located. So we basically at the moment just have a query type here that can fetch the books. And from the books or from the book, I get to the author. In order to upload a file, we need to introduce a new type called mutation. Mutations are used to change data on the server. So it's fitting if we want to upload a file to use a mutation. Uh, next, we need to define a mutation and we're gonna introduce the upload profile picture mutation here. And in our mutation, we pass in the author ID and a file. That is our profile picture. And the iFile abstraction comes from hot chocolate and it abstracts the transport uh, things that are happening behind the scenes. So iFile provides us with the name that comes out from the multipart section and if it's available a length. Depending on if we use buffered or a fully streamed approach. Then we have two helper methods to get essentially a handle on the stream or to have the stream content from the multipart be copied into another stream. Okay, so what we're going to do is store this incoming uh, profile picture in our www root slash images directory so we can 
query that image. At the end of all, we will just return the author uh, to re requery the changed state of our server. So let's put that together. So the first thing we want to create is a file stream to our disk. So we use using var stream here, and then we just use file create. This will open a standard file stream here. And then I already prepared here a pass. So I have a constant here which um, points to the www root directory here. And then we construct from the author ID the file name. Okay, so we have now a local stream to which we can write to. The next thing is we're going to use the file object here to copy everything from our multipart request document to our local file stream. So we say copy to async and copy into our file stream. The next thing is we always should introduce in such async situations a cancellation token. So if the consumer aborts or cancels the upload because we, it could be a huge file and the user could cancel this request and then we would just cancel executing this mutation, writing this to the disk. So we could pass on this cancellation. Last but not least, uh, we just return the author so we can refetch our data here, our changed data. With this, we have everything already implemented, but we need to wire this still up. So we go to our program CS here, and then we register our mutation type. So we say add mutation type and mutation. And we also have to register the upload scalar that we are using. So we say add type, upload type, and then we would be essentially done. To make this a nice mutation, uh, we can also use the mutation conventions here. So let's put them in and then GraphQL transforms uh, the mutation to uh, apply the best practices, like using an input, an input object for passing in the author ID and the stream, and also having a payload object when we reselect the data from our mutation. With this, we can start our server. So let's .NET run this thing and then head over to Banana Cake Pop. So in Banana Cake Pop, let's refresh the schema here and have a look at it. So we can see here's our query type, but we already can see there's a mutation. Let's use the column view because I think it's uh, a lot clearer. So we have our mutation here. Then we have the upload profile picture mutation here. We can see we have an input object here and that's done by our mutation convention. And if we go into that, we can see we have the author ID and our upload scalar. Okay, let's write a quick mutation to upload our file. So let's call the mutation upload and select our upload profile picture mutation here. We want to reselect the profile picture. So when we have written the picture, the image, the profile image to our disk, we want to reselect it as a response. Okay, and then we can just pass in the input object here, but there's one issue because GraphQL or the GraphQL syntax doesn't know anything about binary streams. There is no binary literal um, that would even blow up our GraphQL request document. So we have to actually pass it in as a variable. So we would say input is of the type upload profile picture input and then we would just pass that into, into our input argument. Okay. So with this, we can now specify our variables down here. Input, our author ID is, let's use one. 
and then we can put pass in the file. But we first need to upload the files that we want to upload to our uh, graphical endpoint into Banana Cake Pop. So we have down here an add files dialog. We could throw that in, and Banana Cake Pop would put these files in our root file structure. So if we open the documents tab here, you can see it would just dump all the files here. But we also could just create a folder here, file uploads, and then add our documents into this folder. We say add files, and then let me just drag in a couple of files here and save them to our uploads folder. And now I can use them as a variable. Let's for instance take the orange placeholder image that we have here and then run this mutation. So you can see it's already uploaded and now we have here as a return type our URL where this image is hosted. So we can click on there and then a tab opens and we can see it's really uh, uploaded to our server. Awesome! So this is how you can efficiently upload files using GraphQL and test it with Banana Cake Pop. With this we are at the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please hit the like button. And also if you want to help our project, please go and star it. It's always a great help to open source projects and the easiest way to give back. And with this, I'm out.